All right. Some other techniques that are in use that allow us to improve our spatial resolution are things like centers mounted to the hull, hull mounted centers. So while the ship is traveling from one place to the next, we can continuously record, record data as the ship is moving and Im again, improve our spatial resolution. Satellites, of course, provide nearly continuous in time global coverage of ocean properties. So think about a satellite view looking down upon the ocean has really let us uh, understand and see the ocean in ways that were never possible prior to the 1970s. And it's really been mind boggling in a sense uh, because our view of the ocean now and the complexity that we discovered when looking at these satellite images just blew our minds. It was like, wow, it's really complex. Um, and you can see some figures like that in the book as well. At the same time, it's really helped us out to understanding how the ocean works. Now, satellites only see the very skinny part of the surface, so they don't tell us anything about what's going on underneath the ocean. And the other disadvantage of satellites, even though I just extolled their virtues, the other disadvantage is that they really only see broad areas at one time. You, it's, it, you, you really you know there's a building over there, but you don't know what color the building is, or you don't know if it, what kind of hinges it has or something like that. It's that kind of thing. If you're trying to read a sign from far away, you know there's a sign there and it has printed words on it, but you don't necessarily know what all the fine print is. And that's one of the limits of satellites, although that's improving as well, the resolution, the, what we're able to actually see is still pretty large and that's fine for some questions but when we're really getting down to fine scale structure of the ocean satellites are limited in that ability we also um, use moorings and we talked a little bit about that and tommy dickey's mooring out off bermuda moorings are fixed in place and we looked at a sediment trap mooring in chapter five moorings have centers sensors attached to cables and they stay there and they give us continuous time series of information in some cases every few seconds in some cases maybe every hour and they provide continuous time series data albeit only at one location so where satellites give us a big picture but nothing below the surface moorings give us below the surface but they don't give us much of an aerial coverage in order to get that aerial coverage we have to put out a lot of moorings Okay, so there's differences in how satellites and how moorings help us understand the ocean properties, the, the, how the ocean works as a system. Satellites give us broad spatial coverage. Moorings give us very detailed temporal coverage. There's those temporal spatial scales that I just talked about. Okay, and we have other things also that are being used to help us. Here's a picture of the Bermuda testbed mooring managed by Professor Dickey, my co-author. And here you just see at different depths, there's a series of different instruments. These are anchored to the bottom by essentially a railroad wheel. And there's a large meteorological buoy that keeps this whole thing afloat. This meteorological buoy also has on it a satellite transmitter. So as these instruments collect their data, as many of them collect their data, not all of them, they can transmit that data to this package here, which can then via satellite send it to US UC Santa Barbara, where Professor Dickey um, is employed, does his research where he's a professor, and we get real-time data essentially in just a few minutes. You can know what's going on out off the in the Sargasso Sea off Bermuda. Very powerful tool, and really Professor Dickey has been one of the pioneers in developing and using these kinds of tools for understanding what's going on in the world ocean. Here's a sort of new set of instruments, new say within the last decade or so, but this is an Argo float. And the Argo float is a self-profiling robot. It really is a little robot. And here's a Japanese ship dropping one off. These robots are now deployed at more than 3,000 locations around the world ocean and they go up and down measuring ocean properties. Here's a close-up of one by using a motor that pumps oil essentially in and out of a bladder. The buoyancy of these can be controlled. So this instrument can go deeper in the water column or higher in the water column, depending on the amount of oil that's in its bladder. And all the while it can collect information on temperature and salinity 
and other things as well. Um, sometimes other kinds of instruments, uh, particularly ones for measuring the amount of phytoplankton in the water through chlorophyll are attached to these. As these instruments make their journey up and down in the water and collect their information, they store it and then they can send all that information to a satellite. That satellite takes it off to a shore station. And again, this is another website where you can go and find out what the temperature and salinity are at any of the more than 3,000 locations that we find uh, where these Argo floats have been deployed. And here's a map. All these little dots represent the now 3,148 floats as of September 20th, 2008 each one of these little dots is an Argo float. And it looks like a lot, and it's certainly more than oceanographers have ever had before, but the ocean remains undersampled in regard to its temperature and salinity. But the Argo system is certainly the largest oceanographic instrument system ever deployed, and it, these robots, these self-propelled robots, really are our sentinels for understanding what's happening to the ocean, particularly as a result of human-caused climate change. So as the climate warms up, the ocean is warming up, and these 3,148 instruments or robots are providing information and providing a record of what's going on in the ocean as a result of, at least to some part, human-caused global warming. So they're important. All right, I talked already a little bit about satellites, but here's a picture of satellites. And here you also see that any satellite view is really composed of a series of orbits and each time the satellite goes across the surface of the Earth it views a what's called a swath, okay? So in this case the satellite is looking down upon this part of the ocean and gathering those data and then sending those data to a shore station. So to get truly global coverage it may take a day or two for this satellite depending on the particular satellite to make its complete journey around the Earth. And in some cases, clouds or uh, for whatever reason, uh, some other features of the atmosphere prevent measurements being made. So sometimes we have to cobble these pictures together from several different passes of the satellite. So even though they're pretty good for providing temporal coverage, in many cases, we only get measurements on the order of a week or every two weeks that give us a complete picture. Still, think about how oceanographers had to do their work not even 50 years ago, taking a ship out, dropping a CTD in the water, moving to the next place, dropping it again, bringing it up, moving to the next place. There's no way we could cover as much of the world ocean as we can now today using satellites, using moorings, and using robots, okay?